Hi, this is QD Video brought to you by RoomNow.Live. We're down to the last few days of discounted registration. Check it out at RoomNow.Live. Today's case from the clinic is entitled, How Many Days of Fever? And this goes to the diagnosis of an auto-inflammatory syndrome. I'm fortunate enough to see a lot of patients with Stills disease and auto-inflammatory disease and a lot of patients who don't have those diagnoses. There are a lot of mistakes often made in diagnosing such patients and many of you throw around a diagnosis of Stills disease like, like their nickels when in fact they really should be manhole covers. But you really need to be very, very rigid about the criteria used to make these diagnoses. So this fellow came to me with a history of periodic fevers. Um, they weren't every day, they'd be bouts of a few days and they would kind of recur at uneven intervals. And, um, and he would get, he's treated with steroids and he does very, very well. His fevers would be 103 to 104, um, last three to five days. And the question is what kind of auto-inflammatory syndrome does he have? Well, we have a final diagnosis because we've done gene testing showing that he has um, an MEFV gene um, uh, rearrangement. He's heterozygous for that, uh, um, that gene that says that he has familial Mediterranean fever or FMF. So the very clear and easy way of looking at these febrile syndromes is how many days do you have the fever? And we're gonna talk in real fever here. We're not talking um, 199.9 100.7, tell them I'm in the shower. Um, and so how many days of such fever do you uh, need? Again, it needs to be at those high levels, usually greater than 102. Um, and if it's three to five days, and usually closer to three days of fever, then you wanna consider the diagnosis of FMF, um, also muckle wells. The diagnosis of FMF is important because it doesn't have to be in someone who has a Mediterranean heritage. You should not um, exclude the diagnosis on the basis of ancestry because we often don't know our ancestry. This, this fellow, actually his family uh, comes from uh, Korea and he was surprised that he has a Mediterranean disorder, but cl clearly he does because he has the following symptoms. He has recurrent bouts of fever lasting usually three, last one was five days. There's not a typical periodicity. These are not quotidian daily fevers. He's heterozygous for the MEFV gene mutation um, that's uh, sometimes associated. He doesn't have one of the five top uh, genes that are often tested for. He's seronegative for everything. His last CRP was 267 milligrams per liter. His white count 26,000, his ferritin 500. He's had evanescent rashes. He's young, he's 20, uh, 30 years old. He has had a prodromal sore throat, lymphadenopathy, pericarditis, and itchy urticarial rash. Again, all these are short, very short lived. Again, three to five days, you think FMF. Two weeks of fever, you think of what? Traps, the, the TNF uh, um, receptor one associated disorder responds well to uh, etanercept. And if you have daily fevers, daily quotidian, quotidian means they occur at the same time every day, almost like a circadian syndrome occurring at the exact same hour or minute every day. Stills disease tends to be late at night, sometimes late afternoon, never at 7 a.m. Um, and it's a quotidian disease. So if you have a daily high fever, spikes up to 100, 300, 400, 5, you would consider a diagnosis of systemic JIA in the adult or in the kid. Uh, and if it's an adult, you might also consider the diagnosis of Schnitzler syndrome, and you should do an SPEP and look for um, a, mon a monoclonal or polyclonal gammopathy that would be sort of the marker for that disease. So that's how you know how many days of fever can lead to a diagnosis. Tune in for more QD videos. Enjoy.